Hi everyone, Anthony Morganti here. A few days ago, I did a Photoshop video. It was a trick photography post-production technique where you could have the same person in multiple places in the same image. You're looking at an example of it now. It is a single park bench that has my son Joe sitting in three different positions on the bench. Now this final image actually consists of three individual images that I shot with my camera on a tripod. The first image is my son sitting on the far right hand side of the bench. The second image, he's sitting in the middle of the bench. And in the final image, he's sitting on the far left hand side of the bench. And in that Photoshop video, I demonstrated how you could use masking to make it look like there's three different versions of my son Joe sitting on a single park bench. After that video posted, Someone asked me if you could do that in Affinity Photo, and I said, yeah, it's, it's as easy to do in Affinity Photo as it is in Photoshop, and I'll do a video on it very shortly, and that's what we're going to be doing today. Now, if you would like to download these images for free to work along, along at home, you can. In the description below this video, there'll be a link for them. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to clear the screen here and clear the, the palette so we could start from scratch, and I'll show you how to do this in Affinity Photo. Okay, everything's cleared. We're ready to start from scratch. The first thing we need to do is get those three images into Affinity Photo. We need to load them in a stack. To do that, go up to File, and then down to New Stack. And you'll get the New Stack dialog box. We need to add those images to this dialog. To do that, click on Add. I have the three images on my desktop. You can see they're right here. I'm gonna click on the first one, hold the Shift key down, to click on the last one so they're all selected and click open. Once I do that, you can see that all three images are here in the stack. I want to automatically align the images. Now, even though I used a tripod, there might have been some slight movement between the shots, so I want to make sure that everything is perfectly aligned, so I'm going to check that. Now this drop down, it really doesn't matter for what we're going to be doing, whether you use perspective or scale, rotate, and translate, but I would suggest just to be on the safe side, you scale, rotate, and translate, that will probably work best um, if there's something different about in your images compared to mine. Do not use live alignment and click OK. Now, it's going to load them in a stack, but you'll see that Affinity Photo does something a bit different than what Photoshop did. When we loaded images into a stack in Photoshop, we just had the three images on top of each other, and you could just see those images. Well, you're looking at it now, I have an empty park bench. I did not take a photo of an empty park bench. I had three images, and each of those images had Joe sitting somewhere on a park bench. Now, you see we have this empty park bench. What Affinity Photo does when you load images into a stack, it does something called stack blending. And in this case, if you go over here, you'll see that there's this single live stack group. And you can see this little X with the tilde. That's the stack blend mode, I think median. But if I click on it, you can see, yeah, it's median. And if I hover over them, you can see what mean looks like. There's the median. There's outlier. And wow, outlier looks like it works, right? But it really doesn't. I'll get back to that in a moment. We'll go to maximum, minimum. I'm just going to show you all these range, mid-range. You can see all these different stack blends it could do. Now, I want to make a note about median. If you're ever out photographing, let's say a tourist attraction where a lot of people are milling about, what you could do to eliminate the people is to take multiple images with your camera, of course, on a tripod. So everything that is static in the scene is still, but people moving through the scene will be photographed at different locations as they move about the scene or different people are in there and stuff like that. Then you load them into a stack and use this um, median stack blend for it and you should be able to eliminate all the tourists from the shot so you just have your tourist attraction all by itself now for our image uh this outlier seemed to work right and actually it almost works but if you look at my son joe here you could see that it's a little blotchy it's not working quite right on the far left joe so that one almost works and you could see his legs over here don't look right either but you could try that maybe it'll work for your images and then you're done but if it doesn't work like mine, what you need to do is do what we did in Photoshop. We need to separate these three images out, put layer masks on them, and do some painting on those masks so we have it uh, showing properly. Now to do that, open up this group by clicking on this little triangle. 
then what you're going to want to do is click on the top image. In this case, it's Joe-2. Hold the shift key down and click on the bottom image. In this case, it's Joe-3. So all three images are selected. And then just click and drag it up to the very top above that group. Then go down to the group and right click on that group and delete it. So we have the three images. Now you can see it's more conventional. They're one on top of the other. The top image, Joe-2, he's sitting on the far left. Joe-1, he's sitting in the middle. And Joe-3, sitting on the far right. Now what we need to do is we need to poke holes in these images so that, let's say, in this top image where Joe's sitting on the left, we could see the middle Joe and the far right Joe. So what we're going to do is we're going to turn that top image off, and we're going to work on the middle image first. The middle image has Joe sitting in the middle of the bench. It's totally covering up the image below it, which is Joe sitting on the far right on the bench. So what we need to do is we need to take this middle image, Joe sitting in the middle, and poke a hole in it so the Joe on the far right comes through. And to do that, we're going to get a mask. So make sure you're clicked on that middle image and apply a mask to it. Now when you apply a mask to it, it's going to be a white mask. And a white mask won't do anything. You need to paint in black on that mask. So you want to get a brush. You can hold the, or tap the B key on your keyboard and you should get a brush. There it is, right there. And the brush settings, opacity 100%, flow 100%, hardness somewhere around 50 is good. Then what you're going to want to do is make sure that you're painting in black. So you go to the color swatch tab, and make sure black is the foreground swatch. If it isn't, just flip them by clicking right there. So we have black as the foreground swatch, we're on the mask, and we're gonna click on the mask. There we go. And one cool thing about Affinity Photo is when you hover over an area and you're painting on a mask, it will show you what is below that mask. In this case, Joe on the right. So I know exactly where to paint. It helps. Compared to Photoshop, you don't really know, right? So we'll paint there. And now we have two Joes. Now we need to work on that top layer. Let's click on that and turn it on. And you can see it totally covers up the layers below it. We need to poke a hole though, so, so the middle Joe and the right hand Joe come through. Again, we're gonna add a mask. Again, we're gonna paint in black with a brush. And we're just gonna paint on the middle Joe first to bring him in. And then the right hand Joe to bring him in. Now, we're done. But if you accidentally make a mistake, like you didn't have your coffee, or maybe you had too much coffee and you get a twitch and you go, Wonk, and you go, oh no, I messed it up. All you need to do is to paint in white. So flip-flop the swatches and then paint in white to undo your boo-boo. And that's it. You're done. That's it. That's as easy as that. So if you haven't seen that Photoshop video and you'd like to, I'll have a link to it in the description below this video. And remember, you could download these files for free to work along at home. One note about the download. When you click on that link, it will just automatically download the photos. It will not go to a web page or anything like that. And I've received a few emails. People said they're clicking on the link and it's not working. You may not realize it, that it actually downloaded the, fold, fold, the photos. So I would look in your downloads folder, folder or whatever folder you use for your downloads. Boy, I'm having a hard time talking. I apologize. So... When you click on the link, the photos are just going to download automatically, find them on your computer, and you're good to go. Thank you, everyone who watches my videos. I really do appreciate it. I'll talk to you guys soon. <laughs>